So I'm very sorry that you're having to listen once again to a recording um, and I can't be with you. I, I can't help note the irony that um, I'm unable to attend a conference about COVID because of COVID. Um, I'm going to be discussing the management of POPs both in the COVID, uh, long COVID and non-COVID setting. Generally speaking, the management of POTS involves lifestyle um, alterations or self-management um, and sometimes medication. And much of the treatment was actually hijacked from the treatment for orthostatic hypertension and vasovagal syncope. And therefore, obviously, there are going to be a lot of similarities in the approach. First of all, um, you want to um, try to avoid any triggers that will exacerbate symptoms. Um, stop any medication, such as medication that lowers blood pressure or um, has a tendency to increase heart rate in postural tachycardia syndrome. Um, many patients find that um, prolonged standing worsens their symptoms, and in some patients, even prolonged sitting can make things worse, and sitting with their feet elevated can be helpful. Um, heat and alcohol vasodilate and tend to make things worse. And also heavy meals where uh, heavy meals rich in refined carbohydrates um, tend to, to make things worse. Um, it's necessary usually to increase the blood volume with um, salt and increased fluid intake and um, take a detailed fluid history from your patient because often they underestimate how much fluid they're having in a day and um, in fact um, recommending bottles that actually measure the amount that the patient's taking or, or using an app there's some quite a few nifty apps around the internet that can be um, downloaded and used to monitor fluid intake and patients should aim for around three liters a day um, more if they're in a hot environment or exercising we usually recommend that children who are smaller in size drink until their urine is a pale straw colour. And patients are usually a bit dehydrated overnight and therefore a boost before rising um, in the morning um, is, is useful. And what, what rapid water drinking is interesting. Um, drinking two glasses of cold water um, in quick succession helps to raise the blood pressure and reduce the heart rate within minutes um, well before the fluid has actually entered the bloodstream. Um, we usually recommend an additional six grams of salt per day, which is the same as a, a level teaspoon or 10 slow sodium tablets. But obviously, you have to take um, care in patients who have renal disease, um, cardiac disease and in children who are particularly sensitive um, to salt and a number of other conditions as well. Um, small um, children um, should normally have their, the, the amount of salt calculated on an individual basis. Um, gut symptoms are very common in POTS depending on the study of uh, um, the effects 70 to 90 percent of patients and nausea, abdominal pain, constipation, bloating, diarrhea and heartburn are the commonest symptoms. There's been very little research into which dietary measures will help um, or worsen sim these symptoms or in fact um, help or worsen POTS. Um, there's a lot more research into gut issues in um, hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, um, which of course commonly affects patients with POTS. Um, it looks likely that either celiac disease or gluten intolerance may be more common in people with POTS. Um, some patients can have really very severe gut symptoms or multiple intolerances. And referral to a dietitian or a gastroenterologist um, may be necessary and you know, dietary supplements or, um, or medication be may be necessary to control symptoms and aid nutrition. A number of tips to help with, um, with um, eating well in POTS. Very often patients respond to small meals eaten more frequently throughout the day. Um, eat slowly and chew food thoroughly. 
and eat foods with a low glycemic index, such as the one shown in the image um, there. Um, and avoiding liquids for half an hour before um, and after meals can be useful too. Um, lie down for 30 minutes after meals when postprandial symptoms are usually worse. Um, and for some reason, increasing salt and water appears to improve symptoms of nausea in POTS. Um, regarding activity, um, for some patients find exercise very difficult and can feel unwell for hours afterwards. Um, so we usually recommend a very, very graduated exercise regime, often increasing over months and months. Um, and patients sometimes don't feel the benefit for weeks or months. Um, taking exercise in a supine um, condition, such as Pilates and swimming, is useful. Moving on to recumbent exercise, biking or rowing, and then brisk walking. And it can be important to pace activities um, throughout the day to reduce um, the severity of flare-ups. Um, compression clothing needs to be at least class two and waist high to be um, effective. Um, a number of patients find the traditional prescription compression tights um, intolerable and they find that, for example, some of the sports um, compression clothing is more acceptable. There are postural manoeuvres which can help to prevent fainting and these are the same as the ones used in vasovagal syncope um, and orthostatic hypertension um, and they can also reduce symptoms and that involves things like tightly crossing the um, thigh, squeezing the buttocks, um, elevating a leg so that blood doesn't pull um, or squatting down in an emergency or even lying down flat and putting your legs up in the air um, when um, things are, are, are beyond recovery. Um, but remember, if you squat down, that when you stand up, that usually markedly exacerbates symptoms. Cognitive behavioural therapy can be um, useful in POTS. Um, patients can be resistant um, because they've often, in, in our study, half of patients had been labelled with psychological problems um, to account for their physical symptoms, and I believe the same occurs in long COVID. Um, so if you think it would be helpful, it may be necessary to explain in some detail that it's to help a patient um, adjust to living with a, a long-term um, illness where, where perhaps they were, were you know, healthy recently before, um, or some of the symptoms of um, POTS and long COVID for that matter can be really quite frightening and um, CBT can help patients to manage um, these symptoms better. Medication um, should be considered where patients either have very severe symptoms when they initially present um, or are still sem symptomatic after they've tried the norm pharmacological strategies, um, usually for between three and six months. Um, the main aims of medication are to improve the blood volume, narrow blood vessels, or blunt the tachycardia in POTS. Um, the sort of medication that can be used, particularly in patients with a very high heart rate and very small doses of beta blockers or evabridine can be useful. Um, and in patients who have more of a tendency to low blood pressure, a particularly midodrin is helpful. Um, also, cortisone, pyridostigmine um, can be used, um, octreotide injections, rarely clonidine in the hyperadrenergic form of Pots. And desmopressin has sometimes been used as a sort of pill in the pocket where patients can take it on a day when they, they know that they're probably going to have worse symptoms, um, such as exams or um, weddings, funerals, that sort of thing. And there's been a bit of a vogue recently for intravenous fluids, and they can certainly be useful in an emergency situation where patients are um, dehydrated, say, due to a gastroenteritis or um, hyperemesis in, in pregnancy, but there are some obvious risks with regular intravenous therapy. And, and uh, I would suggest that that's um, used with caution when the advantages are weighed up um, against the, the, the significant risks. 
um, there are more resources for your patients on the POTS UK website and there's also a section for healthcare professionals um, and also the Royal College of GPs um, has a post-COVID um, e-learning module which I believe is open access um, and um, the recently published Royal College of GPs syncope toolkit um, is also um, open access on, on their website and has a small section on POTS. Um, if there, there are a number of circumstances in which it might be necessary to refer a patient to a POTS sent specialist centre and there is a list of some specialists in the UK on the POTS UK website. Um, you would be thinking about referring if you know you're not very sure about the diagnosis, there's, there's diagnostic doubt. Um, to exclude, for example, if a patient has chest pain or palpitations, in some circumstances it might be necessary to exclude a cardiac condition. Patients that don't respond to pharmalo pharmacological measures and basic medication. And in more complex cases, for example, um, quite a lot of POTS patients have associated conditions such as Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, um, chronic fatigue syndrome, autoimmune disorders, severe gut disorders, and in these circumstances, they may need the input of a number of specialists. Um, so thank you very much um, for listening. And I'd just like to take this final opportunity um, to thank the team at POTS UK, um, the trustees, um, and um, our two administrators in particular, um, Joe, who has been working so hard over a number of months um, to make this happen. And of course, to um, Dr. Nick Gall, um, who has uh, we've worked with for a number of years, and we're very pleased to be able to deliver um, this masterclass um, with Nick once again.